You begin to think of yourself as, think of yourself as a shit getting done machine. This is the How to Quit Working Show. Jeff Steinman believes entrepreneurship is the only true path to freedom. That's why he created the How to Quit Working Show, where you'll hear stories, insights, and inspiration from lifestyle fanatics who left their soul-sucking 9-to-5 job forever. Now, here's your host, author, entrepreneur, and ultimate lifestyle fanatic, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. Today we're going to talk about a really important topic and that is how to stop procrastinating. I hear from people all the time that they think their biggest issue is that they keep putting things off and I got to say I've had some pretty big personal struggles with this in my life and also have heard from a lot of folks who've had those struggles and I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective on how you can stop procrastinating on this episode of the How to Quit Working Show. It's going to be amazing stuff. Now before we get we jump into that, I've got a question for you. Are you a member of the How to Quit Working Circle? If you are, that is great. I'm so glad that you're there and I love to see your great interaction and I love to see the amazing progress that you're making on your businesses and I love hearing your updates over on Facebook in our private members area. If you're not, why not? It's free, it's absolutely free and it gives you access to a free video training series. It gives you access to an amazing Facebook community of people just like you who are out there looking for other people to network with and other people to be around and interact with, get ideas from and maybe even do business with. There's tons of folks out there just like you and it's a great place to become a member of a community of like-minded people. You can get access to all of that over at howtoquitworking.com slash circle and I look forward to seeing you in the How to Quit Working Circle. Now, I want to jump right into our topic for today, which is how to stop procrastinating. And it is a really, really important topic because we all struggle with this. And I want to, like, before we get into some really specific actionable things that you can do to stop procrastinating, I want to talk about kind of one of the really core issues that is I think ultimately one of the biggest things that helps us or keeps us from getting things done and getting rid of this ridiculous habit of procrastination. And really what that comes down to, that, that core issue that we all tend to have, and, and we all have it for different reasons. It's maybe ties back to something in your childhood, or maybe there's some kind of insecurity or something going on, or, or who knows why it is. But many of these things boil up into this persistent chronic problem that we have as human beings and I call it like the habit of not getting things done or a habit of failure because what happens is let's let's uh, let me just do a little bit of a metaphor here if you remember back in maybe your younger days or maybe your current days you remember there being that friend maybe you still have that friend there's that person and whenever you ask him or her to do something or you, maybe it's as simple as hey give me a call next week or maybe it's like let's go out and grab a drink next Tuesday or maybe it's hey would you email me that guy's name that we were talking about or whatever it may be Whenever you ask that person to do something, it never happens. The person never keeps any commitments. The person never does what they say they're going to do. And they just never follow through on anything that you ever ask them to do or that they commit to doing. And that people like that, what's interesting about people who are like that is they love to make commitments. They, they'll tell you they'll do anything. Oh, yeah, I'll happily wire a million bucks to your bank account because ultimately they know that they're not going to do it. Now that's an extreme example. I had a friend like this uh, back when I was in my early 20s and uh, his name was Ben and we all knew that whenever Ben said that he was going to come out to the bars or he was going to go hang out with you or he was going to come to a party or whatever it was, he wasn't going to show up nine times out of 10. 
Everybody knew this about Ben. Everybody knew that Ben is just never going to show up. He is never going to keep any commitment that he ever makes. So it's really kind of pointless to ever make a commitment with him. So that's my experience. I know you have had an experience with someone like that in your past. And what happens when you begin to get on to this person? When you begin to realize, and it doesn't take long because as humans, we're pretty smart. When you begin to get on to this person, you begin to realize, okay, every time I ask Ben for something or every time I invite Ben something, he's gonna say yes, he's gonna be all in, but he's never gonna follow through. What happens is you begin to have absolutely no trust in this person. You don't believe a word that they say. They can tell you they're gonna do anything in the entire world and you're just kinda of like, yeah, right, whatever. And so, so you have absolutely no trust in this person. If you really truly needed something, it was really important, it was really important that you needed a ride from the airport or you needed somebody to just go talk to or whatever it is, if it's really important, you would never, ever, ever ask this person because you know that they probably won't come through. Here's what happens when you constantly procrastinate. When you constantly procrastinate and you constantly say, first thing tomorrow, I am going to get that thing done. I am going to wash those dishes. I'm going to mop the floor. I'm going to uh, make that sales call. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Whatever it is that you're going to do. When you are constantly telling yourself that and you're constantly not doing it because tomorrow morning rolls around and you say, eh, maybe tomorrow, eh, maybe the next day. Eh, maybe next week. Eh, maybe I'll just talk myself out of completely doing that thing in its entirety. But what happens is you become to yourself like that friend who never follows through. You become that person that you know you can't rely on. You can say to yourself, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. But you know it ain't gonna happen. You become a failure to yourself. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself to do those simple little tasks. And it gets worse. Then you begin to view yourself as a failure. Not just somebody who can't get things done, but somebody who never gets anything done and who never accomplishes anything and is never going to be successful. And you know full well that in order to meet your goals, you're going to have to do things. You're going to have to do a lot of things over and over and over again. And if you can't even commit to being able to do those simple little things on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll never have the faith and confidence in yourself that you need to actually make it happen. So this habit of failure, this habit of procrastination, this habit of not getting things done will completely sabotage you. It will completely 100% sabotage you from having any success at all. Because if you can't see yourself through to the next simple activity that you need to do, there's no way you'll ever see yourself through to all of the cumulative activities that it takes to successfully start a business, to successfully accomplish anything in life. So the first thing you have to do is if you have this habit of failure, if you have this habit of procrastination, this habit of not getting things done, and it's reached a point where you no longer trust yourself to actually do the things you need to do, then you really have to take some action. You really, really have to do something different. Now, if you don't believe that you've reached a point where you don't trust yourself, give that some real thought. Because not trusting yourself to get things done is not something that's necessarily going to be at the top of your head, right? It's not going to be at the top of your mind. That's not going to be up in the conscious level of thought. 
and we've talked about this before on the show, but there's many levels of thought. One is conscious. If I ask you what you're thinking about right now and you answer the question with, I'm thinking about X, Y, Z, that's your conscious level of thought. But that's like 10%, maybe less, of what's actually going on in your brain. And the dangerous stuff is the 90% that you don't actually know is going on while it's happening. So even if you don't think that you've reached this point, be careful because that might be going on down in this area that you don't consciously process. All right, so if you've listened to, the, to this video or podcast, depending on whether you're on YouTube or iTunes or wherever you're listening, this long, then you're probably looking for some help with this. And that's why I'm gonna give you some really specific actionable things that you can do that will flip this around. Now, the first thing that you have to do is you have to just keep track of all the stuff that you have to do. And not in your brain, your brain isn't for storing lists, your brain is for thinking about bigger things, right? Your brain is for bigger concepts, your brain is for being creative and all the great things that you do up there. What you need to do is you need to keep track of these things on something that is outside of your brain. And uh, you can use paper, you can use any of the 85 bazillion apps that are out there to keep track of these things. They only need to do three things. They need to maintain a list of the items that you need to do, they need to maintain a deadline, and they need to be able to be checked off. Now, if you use paper, it's easy. Line one, you write item number one, and you write the date, and then when you're done, you put a line through it. That's easy. Apps do that in a much or more complicated way or a more easy way, depending on how you look at it. But the important thing is to never, ever, 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 ever get all worked up and get caught up in the technology of it or the process of it. Don't get caught up in any of that BS because what happens is, uh, again, this is another issue that we have, and this is actually maybe this whole thing taking place. If, you, if your inclination is, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find the best app to track my tasks. Well, that's probably procrastinating what you really need to do, which is just pick one quickly and easily and, and whatever gets you going the quickest or use a piece of paper and start hammering down those to-dos because selecting that app might actually be procrastinating the very thing that you're looking for the app to do. This is a whole, this could be a whole nother episode of the show, but don't spend a bunch of time searching for an app. Don't email me and ask me what app I use. It doesn't matter what app I use. There's a billion of them and they all work great. They all work adequately. And if you don't like that, use a piece of paper or you could even use an ink pen on your forearm, uh, which might not be as convenient, but it would work just as well. The important thing is you've gotta keep track of those things that you have to do on a regular basis. So keep track of them, that is step Number one, you've got to keep track of them somewhere outside of your tiny, tiny little brain because it is busy doing much more important things. Step number two, this is gonna sound really obvious. Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Do it. Just do the things on the list. Just do the things on the list. You just have to do the things on the list. It's really that simple. And what, what happens here is there, there's more to it than just doing the things on the list. When you do the things on the list, you're starting to turn your brain around and get your brain to stop thinking of yourself as that person that never gets things done or as that person who procrastinates and begin to think of yourself as a person who is productive, as a person who does indeed get things done as a shit getting done machine is what you need to begin to think of yourself as. Think of yourself as a shit getting done machine. That is what will happen when you do the things on the list every single day. Every day, do the shit that's on the list. And then you transform your perception of yourself from being a procrastinator to being a getter done of shit. So get that shit done every single day. Now, it's also important to recognize that things are gonna come up, life happens. Life absolutely comes up and you sometimes don't get the things done. And uh, that is okay. 
that is okay. The thing that I would say is really important in that, in that respect is let's say you get a call from the school that your kid's sick and you gotta go pick your kid up and you gotta take them to the doctor and then you gotta take care of them for the rest of the day and then that knocks items off of your to-do list. Don't just let the items fall off of your to-do list because, you, because that ultimately kind of is back to that reactive procrastination kind of a thing. You've gotta look at the items and say, you know what? This child of mine was a higher priority today, and I have all this list of what's important to me in my life, and this child of mine was a higher priority today because he or she needed me, so these activities did not get done. So I'm not going to forget about them. I'm going to just change the date. I'm going to move them out to tomorrow or to next week or to whenever. And what is happening there is that you're taking control of the list. Even though you had to deal with some other higher priority item that day, you didn't let it take control. You maintained control. You decided that that was a higher priority issue, and then you rescheduled everything else out. And you have still maintained control. That incident that happened with your child getting sick did not change the situation. It didn't take control of the situation, but you took control of the situation and you handled your priorities appropriately. Now, the final thing that you need to do to stop procrastinating is that you need to, at the end of every single day, celebrate what you've gotten done. And again, this isn't as much about getting things done as it is about retraining you to view yourself as somebody who gets stuff done instead of viewing yourself as a procrastinator. So at the end of each and every day, look at that list and say, wow, look what I got done. I got done this and I got done this and I got done this. Man, I did really, really good today. It's also okay to say, you know what? My, uh, my child got sick today and I went to school and I picked him or her up and I took care of him or her, which is the appropriate priority in the vast uh, you know, in, the, in the, the circle of my life, it's the most important priority. So I did that, and that, therefore, is also an accomplishment, and I should leave at the end of the day feeling good about that accomplishment that I made. But you've got to end every day, and a great way to do this is to incorporate it into your end-of-day journal entries, which is what I do at the end of every day. I journal about the day, what went well, what I'd like to do differently uh, the next day. But the first thing that it starts with is listing out the three biggest things that I accomplished that day. And what's really amazing about this process is my goal for myself is to list three every day. And there are days when it is challenging to come up with three. But most days, there's five. Some days there's four, some days there's six, but most days it exceeds three. And that's because what happens is I've trained my brain to think of myself as a winner and to think of every single day as being a huge, huge success, which naturally causes me to view it that way. And it causes me to look at my list and say, well, I gotta come up with three, but shit, there's like five here. That's awesome, right? So as you do that, you'll see that you, your brain changes. This is about changing the way that you think about yourself. And then you suddenly go out into the world as a confident person who knows that you get things done, that you can get things done, that you do get things done, and you know that you're a winner. Speaking of winners, if you are a winner, go over to howtoquitworking.com slash kickstart for more amazing training like this and a simple process that takes you through how to identify a business idea, figure out who wants it, and then take it out and sell it to those people. There's no more wondering if anybody's gonna buy this thing that you've created. It's about finding an idea first and then finding the people who want it, and then, gosh, it sure is easy to sell after that. It's an amazing program, getting amazing results for a bunch of really, really amazing people. It's only for amazing people and people who are winners, and I know that's really all of the people who listen to this show. So go over to howtoquitworking.com slash kickstart. I created that program because I know a lot of people wanna make big progress on their business, but they don't wanna spend big money, and that's why it's less than $100. So go over to howtoquitworking.com slash kickstart, and I look forward to seeing you in kickstart, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the How to Quit Working Show. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working Show. 
Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.